Welcome back to another update video. Today I'm going to be taking you through Amped 5's update 21826. This is probably the biggest update video that we've ever done and this update is going to be absolutely packed with lots of new features for you guys to take a look at. Now the majority of this update is going to be based around timestamps. So we've got a few new filters coming in that will help you with timestamps in your videos. We'll be taking a look at adjust timestamp, load timestamp, and add timestamp. As well as these updates, we're going to be taking a look at a few improvements to our interface and a new PTS playback option. So first, let's take a look at load timestamp. Now this filter has been around for a long time, but we've added new features to it that I want to take you through, which will help you analyze and view the timestamp data for your videos. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to bring in this video here that has a timestamp with it, but the timestamp doesn't have all the necessary data. And what I mean is that it doesn't have a timestamp for every single frame of the video. So the th first thing that we've added with this update is this warning here. Now what's happened has Five has taken a look at the timestamp file associated with the video file and it's found that there isn't a timestamp for every single frame in the video. So it's just prompting you to let you know that this timestamp is incomplete. And you can see that it's prompting you to analyze the timestamp file to see what's going on with it and to understand it better. So now that we've been made aware of this, we can just click OK and it will load the file as expected. So you can see now we've brought this video in and we've got the timestamp showing at the bottom of the screen. But because the program told us that there was something wrong with this timestamp file, what I wanna do is I wanna go and use this new button that we've added to the load timestamp filter and that's the open timestamp in text editor. So now that we can see this timestamp file, we can see that there's just a timestamp on all the iframes and not any of the other frames in the video. And this is why five was telling us that there was a problem. Now, as I mentioned, we've added some new filters such as adjust timestamp, and that's how we're going to interpolate these missing timestamp data. So that leads us nicely into our new filter, which is adjust timestamp. Now with the adjust timestamp, we can shift, interpolate and refine original timestamps. So a quick summary on these. First is shift. Now we use shift when we need to shift the timestamp by a defined amount of time. So maybe the DVR was set up an hour behind or an hour after real time. So we need to shift the timestamp on our video by one hour so it's showing the accurate time. The interpolate is when we have missing timestamps. So like we saw previously, we didn't have a timestamp for every single frame. So what we would do is we would interpolate those missing timestamps. And then refine is slightly different. Refine is when you've got the same timestamp over multiple frames. So for the first second, Maybe it's missing all the millisecond data. So all the timestamps within the first second are the same. So using the refine, you can interpolate the missing milliseconds from that timestamp. So if we go back to our video, we've already got the video with our load timestamp and we've seen that the timestamp here doesn't have all the timestamp data. So I'm gonna to go to adjust timestamp now. So presentation, adjust timestamp, and load that into my chain. You can see in the top right in the filter settings, we've got the different options. So we've got formatting, shift, interpolate, and refine. For the formatting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the filter before I go into the actual filter settings, just so I can get the format incorrect. So here I'm just doing the background with a text. And you'll notice now that we've got two timestamps on the screen. So the original at the bottom and our adjust timestamp at the top. 
So I'm going to move into the shift tab here. And we're going to imagine that our DVR was off by a full day. So at the moment, it, the timestamp was 18th of November. But let's imagine that um, the actual date was the 19th of November. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a single day here. And you'll see now that I've applied that on our adjust timestamp, which is the top of the screen. It's changed to 19. Now, if it was the other way and we wanted to remove a day, not add a day, all we need to do is just remove this plus sign in the offset and replace it with a minus sign. So now when I apply this, you'll see it's now the 17th of November. Now within the update as well, we've added a time calculator tool, which is going to help you with this offset, calculating this offset, but we'll come to that later. So let's move on to the interpolate. Now, if I play this video, you can see that as identified in the text file, there's not a timestamp for every single frame. So this is where we're going to need to use the interpolate. So if I interpolate this now, you'll see that we will get a timestamp on every single frame in our adjust timestamp at the top of the screen. There's a few different options of interpolation here. I first showed linear. We also have based on PTS, but I would recommend you reading the blog post that came out with the update for more information on what all these different interpolation methods mean. I'm going to say it for duplicate right now. And this is where we've got multiple timestamps, which are identical over the same second. The reason I set it as duplicate is so that I can show you the refine next. So as I mentioned, some timestamps you'll get where there's no milliseconds inside it. So you'll just get, if you've got 30 frames per second, on the 37th second, you'll have 30 frames that have the same timestamp. So if we use the refine here and I use the linear, you can see now that those frames will have their own unique timestamp because we've added the milliseconds by refining it in a linear algorithm. The final tab we've got here is this selection and this is where we can place the timestamp where we want to place it. So at the moment on our low timestamp is still showing but we can disable the rendering on the low timestamp to hide that timestamp. Then we can go back to our adjust timestamp and using that selection we can place this timestamp at the bottom of our screen where we would normally expect it. So if you don't want to show both timestamps, make sure you use that disable render. Okay, so let's talk about the new tool that we've introduced in this update, which is the time calculator tool. Now the time calculator tool is there to assist you when you need to make calculations when you're adjusting your timestamp value. When officers recover CCTV footage from DVRs, they should be making note of the time difference between the DVR and real time. And in some cases, this can be hours, minutes and seconds, and it become, can become quite difficult to make that calculation quickly. So this tool is there to help you assist with that. So let's go back to our shift tab within the adjust timestamp and have a look at this offset. So this is where we're going to copy and paste the information from the time calculator in the tools. So the time calculator can be found under the tools in the bottom left. And you can see here it's broken down into time one, time two, the known offset, whether it's plus or minus, and then the calculate button. So I'm going to copy and paste the time one from the shift timestamp filter settings and then here I'm just going to add some or take away some days hours minutes seconds after I've inputted the time difference I can click the calculate button and you can see now I've got the calculated time shown so what I can do now is I can just copy this to clipboard and then once I've copied it to the clipboard, I can go back to my shift 
settings and just paste it in there. And now when I click apply, you can see that that offset has been calculated from the known offset that I put in the time calculator. And if we also look at the timestamp now on the bottom of our video, you can see that's been updated accordingly. You can also use this tool by having time one and time two, and it will calculate that offset for you as well. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our add text filter now, because we've added a few new macros. Some of them are gonna assist you again with your timestamps, and some of them there just for your analysis of the video. Some of these that I'm gonna show you are down, are related to the PTS information in the file. Again, it's quite a heavy and complex topic to discuss in this update video, but there's a really good piece in our blog regarding this written by David Spreadburgh. So I definitely recommend you going and viewing the blog post for this update video. So I'm going to continue using this sample that we've been working on so far throughout the video. And I'm gonna go down to presentation and then add text. So if we open the drop down box here, you can see the list of the macros that we've got. And the new macros that we've added are PTS time, PTS duration, original date and original time. So I'm just gonna set up the two PTS ones for you. So I'm gonna put in the PTS duration macro. I'm then gonna put in the PTS time macro. And then under the filter settings, let's just move this to the top left. And I'll give it a background so everyone can see it nice and clear. And with the macro, there's no description of what it is yet. So I'm just going to type in front of the macro what it is. So PTS duration and then PTS time. So the PTS duration is the PTS duration of each frame and the PTS time is the, that duration added for each frame. Okay guys, so to finish off this update video, we're gonna finally look at some new updates to the interface. So these are gonna be in the player panel. So one of these new features is the PTS playback option. So instead of playing back your video using the average frames per second of the video, what you can do is play the back the video in accordance to the PTS data. So if the PTS data of the frames is variable, you'll be able to play back your video in that variable speed as it was recorded. The other new feature is a small simple one and that's when you've zoomed into your video, you'll see that zoom amount in red writing. So let's jump back into five and take a look at these. So if we look at the bottom right now, it says the zoom amount and it's in red writing. And you can see now at 100% it's black. And anytime I zoom in, it's gonna turn red. Just to notify you that you have zoomed into the video and you're not looking at it at its real size. The second one then is the PTS playback. And to access this, we just right click on the play button of the player bar. And that'll allow me to switch between PTS playback and average frame per second playback. Okay guys, so that's everything for this update. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as I mentioned, there's still a lot of new features within five that haven't been covered in this update video. So please do go check out that blog post for a more in-depth look at the new features and some of the extra features that weren't mentioned in this video. Until next time, take care.